Hi everybody, welcome to IA Command. This is going to be the first installment in a new segment that I'm going to be trying on the channel where I go over some mid to high level strategic and tactical concepts in the game. These aren't rules tutorials, so if you're brand new to the game, you might want to check out some tutorials and get a couple of games under your belt and then come on back. But uh, if you're a regular Imperial Assault player that's looking to up your game in campaign or delve a little bit deeper into the competitive realm in skirmish, this video is aimed at you. So today I'm going to be talking about how to use cover in Imperial Assault. Um, if you're a newer player to Imperial Assault, you maybe don't play a lot of competitive skirmish or you, um, mostly campaign, you might be thinking, hey, there's no cover system in Imperial Assault. Well, while cover is not really an explicit part of the rules, it is still an important tactical element that is present in the game. So what is cover in Imperial Assault? Cover is all about positioning and blocking line of sight. More precisely, it's about placing your figures in spots that are hard for your opponent's figures to see without putting themselves into a bad position and bring, going out into the open. So the basic level of using cover in Imperial Assault is keeping figures out of sight, put position so they can pop out and attack, and then move back into their hiding spot where they can not be seen. So here's an example where our rebel figures are in a shootout with some bounty hunters. Um, the hunters have taken up positions where the rebels cannot draw, draw a line of sight to them without moving further out into the open where all the hunters can easily concentrate their fire. So you can see here we've got Han Solo. Um, he cannot see these weak ways because of this pillar is blocking his line of sight. He can't see IG because of this big block of this wall here. And the same thing for, I, for Greedo. Uh, Chewie can't see Greedo because of the booth here. So even if he tries to move out two spaces, He's not going to be able to see past the, these blocking booth walls. Um, Han can, tr can move out, but if he moves out too, uh, too far, if he moves out here, he'll be able to see IG-88 from there. And you can see, you can see the back corner there and this corner here. But now he's only got one movement point left and he's kind of stuck being out in the open. And all of the pirates will be able to just move to shoot at him, move back. So he's going to be kind of in a bad spot where he's going to take a lot of fire if he does that. So the hunters, you can see they're, the, the, this is how you use cover as a defensive uh, mechanic or st strategy. So note that all the hunters can easily move to a spot where they can shoot Han and still have enough movement points to move back. All right, so that's the basic level of using cover of popping out, attacking, and popping back in. So your opponent can't shoot back at you when it's their turn. But let's talk about shooting while you're in cover. So being able to shoot at a figure without that figure being able to see you while you're shooting at them has become an increasingly important part of IA, mainly because of these two cards up on the screen, Greedo and Rogue Smuggler. Uh, so shooting at Han so that he can't target you with return fire is an important strategy for playing against Han. Greedo brings a similar element with slow on the draw, basically giving every figure that he shoots at a better form of return fire although he has his own form of return fire and parting shot that needs to be considered. So there are two ways to shoot while in cover. One involves straight lines of blocking terrain. So these things like this, these kind of lines. And the other involves hiding behind figures. So I'm assuming you already know how line of sight works in the game. Um, if you need to brush up, go ahead and take a look at the back inside cover of your rules reference guide for some helpful diagrams and maybe check out the line of sight entry in the rules reference guide. So one part of the line of sight rules that I do want to cover because even a lot of players that have played a lot of campaign or casual skirmish seem, don't seem to know about this rule, uh, is, or oftentimes I find don't know about this rule, is that uh, you can actually see around corners that you are adjacent to. So what I mean by that, for example, um, Han is standing in this space right here. Uh, he can see not just in this direction or down this column, he can also see towards the booth here from this space, even though there's a wall right there. That's because you only need to be able to draw a line of sight from one point on the attacker. And these black nubs here that come out, they don't actually extend out into this point. Um, they have said in, I believe in the FAQ, that these nubs do not block this point from being drawn line of sight to. But even though Han can see in that direction, any figures that are standing in this side, so any figures that are standing from on this column and onward can't draw a line of sight to Han because they can only see this one corner and they need to be able to draw 
lines to two of Han's corners. So this wall protects Han from being seen. So let's put this into action. So why is this why is this important? Normally it doesn't really matter that much for most figures, but when you're shooting at a figure like Han, um, you want him to not be able to see you when you're shooting at him. So let's look at IG-88. So IG could move up here, shoot at Han, but then get take a shot back from return fire. So what if instead of doing that, we move IG-88 up, eight, IG up to here? One, two, three, four, five. Now, IG can draw a line of sight from this point to two of Han's points here, corners. But Han Solo can only draw a line of sight to one point and cannot draw a line of sight to IG-88. Therefore, does not get to use his return fire ability. An important thing to note here about the rules for accuracy when you're drawing line of sight this way is you don't follow the line of sight lines per se, but instead you count the shortest number of spaces the attacking figure would have to move to enter the defending figure's space. So if IG is standing here, and let's say let's say this door is closed, so we've got a closed door there, you would count like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's a range eight shot not a range seven shot you don't count one two but let's say the door if the door is open here this would actually be a range six shot so even though ig can't see han this way and is drawing line of sight this direction the closest uh, amount of spaces between the two is actually this way one two three four five six so it's important to keep in mind that accuracy and line of sight lines might take a different path when you are drawing line of sight this way. Um, so the other method for attacking from cover is to attack from behind a figure. For example, um, let's say there's a hired gun that was standing right here. So now Han is in trouble uh, because a figure can move to this spot right here and attack Han from this corner right here. And Han cannot draw a line of sight back to that figure to use return fire. For example, so these weak ways could now go one, two, three, shoot at Han. Han is not going to be able to shoot back because he can't see this weak way. Then this goes one, and then one, two, three, four, shoot at Han, no return fire. So that's an important strategy for attacking Han. Um, these are important tools also for playing Greedo correctly. A lot of players seem to underestimate Greedo after they read slow on the draw and think that he's only good for attacking melee figures, but there are a lot of spaces on maps where Greedo can attack ranged figures with impunity. And Uskru actually happens to be full of, the, full of these types of spaces. Uh, for example, Greedo could move up to here, into the booth here, and shoot at Chewbacca, and Chewie would not be able to shoot back with slow on the draw because this blocking line of terrain is blocking line of sight to two of Greedo's spaces, but Greedo can easily draw from this two lines to Chewie's space. Or he could move to this space, and he would be able to attack Han, and Han normally would be able to attack Greedo with slow on the draw and return fire, but because Greedo is attacking from a space where he can't be seen, Han doesn't get to use either of those abilities. So if we move these guys back. So note that this is an important tool to use against Greedo to prevent him from using his parting shot against you. You want to try and kill him without exposing your figures to his deceptively devastating attack. So like this would be a good spot for Chewie to attack Greedo from so that if he kills Greedo, Greedo doesn't get to parting shot onto Chewie. Uh, do note that parting shot can be used on any target, not just the figure that attacked Greedo. So if you've already got another figure that's in his line of sight, you won't, you might not be able to protect that one, but it's just an important thing to note to control where that parting shot can, can go. So I hope this video was helpful and that you'll be able to use some of these techniques in your skirmish or campaign games. 
Um, I know that with the recent addition of the Nemesis class and Oppression class decks that Greedo has actually become a popular open group choice in campaigns, so I expect this will come up quite a few times, not just in skirmish, but in all game modes. So anyway, thanks for watching you guys. Um, please comment, let me know if this was helpful, if useful, um, if there's anything you think I should have added. Let me know in the comments, and uh, like and subscribe if you like the content. I hope to be doing more of these in the future.